it's Tina from Tina's Tiny's Hamsticker, and today I'm going to talk to you all about my Syrian hamster dot and her custom enclosure. This is my first proper video for the YouTube channel and I'm really really excited to get to meet y'all. It would really really help me out if you would like the video, press that subscribe button and the bell icon beside it so you actually know when I post and if you would leave a comment in support that would be amazing as well. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us and enjoy the video! Dot is a pet shop hamster of unknown origin. She is like a minky kind of colour and she's banded so she has a white strip around her belly and she weighs about 165 grams so she's a healthy girl without being too big and she's not small either. Dot has wonderful ruby eyes and that was what really made me fall in love with her <laughs> when I went to collect her. She just looks so unique and I just think she's gorgeous. So Dot is five months old roughly at this point and she is just a joy. She's a lovely Syrian hamster who is very tame and friendly and is really nice and active which is just amazing to watch. She was a bit of a rescue case from a pet shop. Um, she was returned to the pet shop the same day that she was gotten because she bit a kid. So I swooped in and took her home because it's always hard for them to rehome hamsters who have a bite record. Even though she's super friendly, <laughs> she was just handled too soon. She is just a darling when it comes to handling. Uh, she's very, very adventurous and she really knows her own mind. <laughs> she loves to get time outside of her cage. Uh, she comes very very willingly into my hand and I've actually taught her that if she climbs on this stick or sits right here at the front of the cage that I won't be too far behind coming to swoop in and lift her out and it's always a joy when she's just sitting there <laughs> waiting on me coming to go and lift her. It's just lovely. Dot also spends a lot of time in her wheel. She has a 33 centimeter wheel uh, by Trixie and she just loves it. <laughs> she, if she could, she would probably live in her wheel. That is her main form of exercise, but she also has a running track along the back top of her cage as well, where we find her pretty frequently um, having a nice natural dart around without things in her way. Dot's other favorite pastime is digging. She has a sandbox and a soil box in her cage. They're just cheap litter trays from Poundland, uh, but she really, really enjoys them. I tend to hide things like dandelion roots, seeds and stuff like that in her soil. Um, it's like uh, coconut soil and sterilized topsoil mixed together um, to give the coconut soil a bit of weight. And she just loves it. She loves digging in there and finding what tasty things she can. And that keeps her claws worn down nicely and it keeps her mind occupied as well. Dot toilets in her sand, um, which is amazing for keeping that big cage clean. Um, it saves me having to really deal with a lot of that mess. Dot is a bit of a creature of habit and for as long as we've had her in this big cage, she likes to sleep in the very same multi-chamber even though she has a choice of three. She's made a tunnel that runs from this multi-chamber right to the one at the other end of the cage. but we always find her sleeping in the one in the corner. The one in the corner is a maze from Pets at Home that is flipped upside down and edited a little bit inside to make little rooms and chambers. Um, she has a toilet in one of the chambers, she stashes her food in another one and she has nested material in the third. That sort of mirrors their natural burrows in the wild and that allows her to keep her toilet in an area separate from her stash and separate from her nest so that everything stays hygienic in there and it's easier for me as a keeper to clean. I said that I taught her to come out of the cage. If my husband Stephen tries to lift her instead of me she'll sometimes like test his finger or she'll sit there looking at him like um you're not my mom what are you doing? <laughs> she likes Stephen to hold her but usually not to actually lift her out of the cage. It's usually me handing her across to Stephen. She's very fussy. <laughs> She also will just sit there several times in a day when I put her back and she definitely signals when she wants to come back out. So there are often times where I'll set her down in her cage and she'll loop straight back 
to her spot <laughs> where she goes to get lifted and will just sit expectantly until I come back again and lift her again. <laughs> Dot is a very, very easy hamster to keep. She keeps her cage very neat. She loves to burrow and dig. And she is a rather quiet hamster. She doesn't hang off her lid or do anything crazy, which is just great. And um, when we first got her, she was kept in a Mamble 100, which is a meter long and half a meter wide. And she did bar bite in that cage, which is what inspired us to build the structure behind us. Uh, it kept her much happier and it stopped some of those unwanted behaviours like bar biting. One of the things we love most about Dot's personality is how much she really pays attention to what's happening outside of her cage environment. Very many of my passerians have um, been more into what's happening inside their cage, but Dot really pays attention to her, like what's going on around her. And it's really, really interesting just to see her ears prick up and her to sit and watch outside the glass and all those things. She's far more interactive in that sense than some of my previous hamsters have been. At around five months old, Dot is a wonderfully active hamster. So we are really, really lucky in that we get to see her quite a bit. Basically, when we all get up and go to work, she likes to be awake because I think she knows that we're out of the room. The place is quiet. So I tend to come in with my cup of coffee on my work break because I'm working at home right now and just interact with her, which is really, really nice. Aside from that, she tends to sleep in quite late. <laughs> she is a bit of a teenager and likes to wake up at randomly like 3 a.m. And that tends to be when she's most active and she doesn't tend to go to bed until maybe 9 a.m., 10 a.m. the next day. Whenever you see Dot in her cage, chances are you're gonna see her with full cheek pouches. She just loves to run around and collect things and keep a good stash on her pouches just in case for a rainy day. <laughs> she loves nothing more than collecting as much food as she can to go and stash on her multi-chamber hides. <laughs> Dot lives for food and treats and anything munchable. <laughs> she has a list of favourite treats um, on top of which is probably the Pets at Home Pecan Cookies. She goes nuts for those things. I don't know what they put in them, but I mean, that that must be good stuff. She loves them. She'll do anything for them. She also likes to share the crocs that my daggies eat uh, by Fursalaga. And she also really likes her fresh food as well. So her favourites tend to be broccoli and pieces of carrot, but she eats pretty much anything that is offered to her right now, which is fantastic. She's also had bits of baby food and things as well. I always find that kind of important just in case she was to get ill. It makes it a lot simpler to slip bits of antibiotic and things like that to her. So we tend to introduce baby food quite young. Dot really loves scrambled eggs, so we give that pretty often. And she's had some peanut butter as well, which she quite enjoys, but maybe not as much as the egg. One of Dot's absolute favorite things to eat is this. She loves sorghum like so much. As you can see, she strips it. <laughs> she really, really enjoys it. She loves collecting seeds in general, honestly. She just loves to forage and I really encourage that behavior of my hamsters by adding things like um, seed sprays like sorghum and millet and flax and I also sprinkle dried herbs and flowers and I scatter feed their food. This keeps their noses to the floor and <laughs> stops them doing unwanted behaviours like bar biting and bar climbing and things like that. The cage behind me is basically a huge version of YouTuber Vanilla Ham Ham's IKEA Linman hack where Vanilla Ham Ham cuts some of the tabletops in half. All the tabletops are whole in this cage. So this cage works out at about four times the size of the original Linman hack. In this cage, the back panel is two IKEA Linman tabletops, the 100 by 60 version. The sides are the same tabletops again, and the front is IKEA complement shelves. If I was to rebuild the cage, I wouldn't use those same shelves again because they're not quite the right size and they're not the size advertised online. I would just get a sheet of Perspex, cut the size, and fit that instead. It would be so much easier. <laughs> we fitted two hinged lids to the cage so that we can roll them back halfway. 
I am very, very short. I am four foot nine inches tall and I cannot reach the back of the cage very well at all. So it's very, very important for me to have the hinged lid so the dot can't climb out the back of the cage while I'm working in the front. Very, very important for safety. When we were building Dot's cage, we were very, very inspired by German cage setups and natural cages in general. And that was something that we really wanted to do for Dot, especially with her doing some bar biting and bar climbing in the Mambo. You'll notice some features in my cage are really similar to some of the cages that you would see on German hamster forums. For instance, we have the race track up at the back of the cage. We use at least 30 centimetres of substrate. In Dot's cage, it's mostly 40 centimetres, um, bar the small dip at the front. And we also use a lot of natural materials in there as well. We also scatter feed Dot our food and we have plenty of seed sprays and adventure foods in there as well to hopefully keep her nose to the ground and uh, keep her invested in our environment and really entertained and enriched. When we were doing our research for the cage, I stumbled across some university researchers who looked at the wild environment for Syrian hamsters and in particular looked at their burrow depth and temperature and the width that the tunnel range would span. And I took the measurements for this cage from that. It was just very important to me that Dot's cage allowed for those minimums of the tunnel width and tunnel depth that Bern University found in their research of wild hamsters. I really wanted to give her at least that range, even if I couldn't give her all the open space that a wild hamster would actually roam across. Um, at least I could make her burrow something similar to what she would build for herself. I was sure that the cage was two meters long so that it could facilitate two meter range of tunnels and Dot uses that full width for a tunnel. She has a tunnel that runs from this multi-chamber over here that she likes to sleep in right across to the other one and um, so I know that she really appreciates that and that was one of the um, figures that came out of that research that I read that I'll be sure to link in the description of the video. The same research also found that the tunnel depth was at least 34 centimeters and even way more like right up to 90 centimeters plus so when i was building dot's cage i wanted something that would hold at least 30 centimeters of substrates dot is a really really keen burrower so i'm really glad i did this for her i use like a, a good mix of substrates as well and um, to be sure that it holds tunnels very well and i press it down pretty firmly so that holds those tunnels and they don't fall apart the minute she comes out of them as well. We use a lot of natural uh, decoration in the cage as well. I love things like cork tunnels, bits of driftwood, birch logs, all sorts of natural things like that and Dot really loves to run over them, use them to hide behind and just generally interact with and it's lovely to watch. I think as keepers it's really really important that we remember that hamsters spend likely like 23 hours of their day something like that within their enclosure so when I'm designing an enclosure and deciding where my pet is going to live I really pay attention to what enrichment it can offer because most of their hours are not spent with me um, and getting entertainment through that most of their hours are spent in that cage so I always recommend that people really um, pay attention to that fact and be really sensitive to the animal's needs when they're selecting their enclosures. I'm really glad that you all know Dot so much better than I and I hope that you'll tune in next time when I introduce you to my hybrid dwarf hamster Jiminy. That would be amazing as well because um, he is such a character and he has some story let me tell you. <laughs> In the meantime, thanks so much for watching this video. Remember that like and subscribe and comment and everything that I told you at the start of the video. And I will speak to you next time. Bye.